If you go to buy a microscope, chances are you're going to get this or a similar model. I'm constantly surprised at just how high quality of a microscope that you can get for all of 150 bucks, but the low price tag does come with some caveats. Primarily, these scopes are pretty feature poor and can only do basic things. For most people, that's probably totally fine, but if you're really serious about science, more functions expands the phenomena and material properties that you can investigate. To buy a microscope with features like polarimetry or dark field capability, the price would easily be double that of one of these plain microscopes. But if you know a little bit about optics and how these kind of microscopes work, it's actually super easy to upgrade one of these cheap microscopes to do the same sort of thing. Obviously, the more time you spend modding your microscope, the better your results will be, but I'll show you what you can do with all of 10 minutes and $5 worth of materials. Before we can mod our microscopes, we need to understand what polarimetry is and how dark field images are made. We'll start with polarimetry. A basic polarimeter has three pieces, two polarizing filters and the item to be analyzed. Polarizers really need their own video to explore the ins and outs of how they work, but in short, they have few properties that make them useful in this setup. First, if two polarizers are turned 90 degrees to each other, you can see that the amount of light transmission drops to almost zero. This is because these filters only let light with similar polarization through. Polarization refers to how the electromagnetic fields of a photon are oriented and moving through space. Photons passing through the first filter that aren't already polarized are sort of twisted so that the field lines line up with the filter's orientation. I'll explore how this works in a later video as it's really cool in and of itself. Now, if we put a second filter in front of the newly polarized light, we see that the more we rotate it relative to the first filter, the less light is able to get through. Now, if we set both polarizers perpendicular and then put something in between, due to a property called bifringence, the polarization of photons passing through certain places is twisted again, which changes its ability to pass through the second filter. Only light that is twisted makes it through the second filter. To us, this ends up looking like a color change as different colors are blocked differently as the polarization is twisted around. To see this for ourselves, we can quickly modify our microscope with two polarizing filters. The way I found this works best is to first unscrew the top part of the microscope so the ocular assembly comes off. Then using one of the lenses as a template, since it's basically the right size, trace the outline onto one of the polarizers, then start cutting it out. You may need to gently peel apart the cardboard mount to expose enough of the polarizing film. Then place the film onto the lens of the microscope neck and replace the top section. Then just place the second polarizer over the light source. You'll want to leave the second polarizer free floating as you'll need to be able to rotate it. When I was first trying this, rather than putting the top polarizer where I just showed you, I tried mounting it directly onto the eyepiece, but this didn't actually work very well. The polarizer needs to be further down the optical train for the effect to work properly. However, it did let me show that the polarizers are definitely in place, as I can darken the view by turning the eyepiece. The other nice thing about putting the top polarizer where it is, is it means you don't need to modify any camera mounts. Since I'd been using the hot glue gun for this project, I already had a collection of glue webs and thought they'd be the perfect first test subject. And I wasn't disappointed. Look at how colorful that is. What we're seeing is the stresses in the crystal structure which change the bifringent nature of each strand, and in turn, the colors. And as I rotate the sample, you can see that the colors change clearly. I took two focus stacked images of the same structures, but at 90 degrees to each other, and it's cool to see the radical difference in colors. If you want to see how to make photos like this, be sure to click the link in the description to my earlier video. Before we look at more samples, let's quickly look at another mod, which is adding a dark field. All this really means is making it look like the sample has a black background. For this mod, all we have to do is make an opaque dot on a clear piece of plastic and insert it into the filter holder in the bottom of the microscope. And we need it to be just smaller than the aperture. Originally, I tried printing out a variety of sizes on overhead projector film, but because I don't have a laser printer, it just made a giant mess. I tried coloring it in with Sharpie and stacking several to block out most of the light, but the results were a bigger mess and didn't even work well. As I was experimenting with this and trying to get it to work, I realized that a dime was about the size that I needed, so I glued one onto some more of that clear transparency film and tried that. It almost worked, was, but it was still a little bit too big, so I switched to aluminum foil so that I could easily trim it to the size I needed. And this actually worked really well. So why does this work? Well, it's a bit of an optical trick that uses the fact that a decent microscope has a little lens underneath the sample to focus the light onto it. By blocking the middle part of the light before it gets to that condenser lens, when the light is focused onto the sample, there's still more than enough to illuminate it, but the direct light is gone, giving it the black background effect that we want. 
it's really just a way of turning down the brightness in a really clever way, so you do lose a lot of visibility, hence why you need to adjust the size of the dot. You're threading the line between blocking out enough light and blocking out too much. I should also note that with this setup, you can't do dark field and polarized at the same time, but the polarizer basically has a dark field effect built in, so that's okay. Okay, let's start looking at stuff and see this setup in action. First up, some monopotassium phosphate crystals. Off the bat, these look pretty cool, but I thought it would be better if I exposed more crystal structure, so I dissolved some in water and let it evaporate and recrystallize. While that was drying, I decided to try looking at some living samples. The first thing that jumped out was that some minerals that were otherwise impossible to see before now looked like they were almost glowing. But it really got cool when I found a nematode. In plain light you see one set of detail, but in polarized light it's a totally different set of detail. Honestly, I wish I had this mod installed when I made my last week's video. It, I feel like it would have made it so much easier. Once the potassium phosphate had dried, I loaded it into the microscope and it was way more colorful than before. Just like with the hot glue, you can see different areas change color as you move it around. Some areas go from incredibly vibrant to totally dull with only a few degrees of change. So beyond this looking cool, why is this a useful thing to do to a microscope? Well, as you can tell, it offers a way to see hidden detail that you otherwise couldn't. And if you're into geology, it's a great way to make different minerals show up under a microscope so you can ID them or even notice that they're there. Polarimetry is also used in places that aren't microscopes. Astronomers use it to measure the direction of magnetic fields in faraway galaxies, and radar uses it to tease out fine details of landscapes. So those are two simple mods you can make to a microscope to give all sorts of new functionality. I had a lot of fun filming this, as the colorful slides are really quite cool to look at, so if you've got a microscope, spend a couple of bucks on a set of polarizers and give this a try. If you do, send me your favorite images on Twitter, I'd love to see them. If you liked this video, be sure to check out last week's video where we also did some more microscopy, and examined how a weird species of lichen provided the dye that paved the way for almost all of modern biology, and the discovery of so much about the workings of the cell. And with that, I'll wrap up this video. If you enjoyed and wanted to see more, be sure to subscribe, and most importantly, ring that bell so you see when I post new videos. If you have ideas for future videos or techniques you want me to explore, be sure to leave them in the comments. And as always, a big thanks to my patrons. Your support is what allows me to keep making these videos, and I really appreciate it. That's all for now, and I'll see you next week.